Hello, and welcome to our Sunday meditation at the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Sanctuary of Light. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, and we have a way that we do this meditation. We divide it into three parts. In the first part, we ask our higher self, it's your own inner voice, it's the intuitive essence of your soul to take a form for you so that your consciousness begins to align to that sense that you are a divine being, part of the divine source, and that you can carry that in your body. And so we ask it to take form and then we ask our higher self to touch our body, anywhere in our body. And we breathe into that touch, we draw our higher self in through that space, and then we sit in meditation. You can push a pause button after we do that so that you can meditate for as long as you like. Then the second part of the meditation, we practice what we call the Light Institute, the beautiful radiance of light, the radiance of our beingness. And the way to do that, we imagine that we're drawing white light from the cosmos and a beam of white light coming down through the top of your head, down through your heart, and into your stomach, your solar plexus. Because this is a very important part of our body. It's the center of our emotional body. And then we laser that white light out from us. So we create an energy moving from, from the cosmos through us and out into the world. And this allows us to amplify our presence and actually... Uh, our divine destiny, because it is the giver, it is the one who extends out, that is able to change things. Then there'll be a little om, which we have dividing each part. And then in the third part of the meditation, we choose a situation or a place or, or something, uh, and we focus our consciousness on that so that we are using our meditative state, which is an expansion of consciousness, to focus on our world. This week, um, we're going to meditate on all of the world's leaders. They need to listen to us. Uh, we need to help them to expand their consciousness so that they are in the light, that they are illuminated, that they see what is good for the whole. And so we will gather them up in our mind's eye and we will extend light to them. And that's how we do our meditation. Let's begin. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply into your body through your nose. And now exhale slowly through your mouth because exhalation triggers the meditative state. It slows the brain into a meditative state into Alpha. Once again, breathe in and slowly breathe out through your mouth. And now ask your Divine Higher Self, the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice, to take a form for you. It could take the form of a light or a being a tree, an animal, an equation, whatever form comes, just receive that form because the form that your higher self chooses at any moment will create some kind of alignment, some kind of a, uh, a movement, a quickening within your consciousness. So see that form. And now, ask your higher self to touch your body where you hold your divine essence. Just imagine that this form of your higher self is touching you. And then breathe into that touch as if you could suck in that divine energy into your body. And now draw your higher self through that point into your body. So that as you're sitting in meditation, you are sitting as your own true self, your higher self. Om. Um. 
Take a deep breath into your body and reach up into, you, into the cosmos with your consciousness and find a beam of white light and pull that beam, magnetize it down through the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and feel that beam spreading out in that solar plexus area. And then use your consciousness to laser it out. And as you laser that beam out from you, you might imagine that you are lasering it across the planet so that you are illuminating Gaia, our planet, and then back up into the cosmos and drawing that white light down through you. Feel it quickening you, clearing you, bringing you peace and clarity. Laser that same peace and clarity through that beam of white light out across the planet and back into the cosmos. And just continue to nourish yourself and feed the world by drawing that cosmic, beautiful light in through you and out. Home. Breathe deeply into your body. Exhale, exhale beauty, peace. And now imagine that you could gather up all of the world leaders from every continent, from every part of this world, this global arena. There may be some who come very strongly into the front that need your illumination, that need your conscious energy, or that you wish to connect with them, but just gather the leaders of our world to whom we have given so much power and responsibility and ask them what frequency of light they need from you to become illuminated, to expand their consciousness so they can see truly the good of the whole and that their hearts open as their consciousness opens to include and care for all that are under their care that abide within the responsibility of their leadership and their loving hearts. See what color they show you. They choose because of each color, the frequency of light is a specific vibration that will nourish and alter what needs to be altered. And as soon as you perceive the color that they're showing you, again, reach up into the cosmos and pull exactly that tone, that frequency of light down through the top of your head and laser it out your solar plexus to all of the world leaders. Doesn't matter whether you disagree with them or you're afraid of them. At this moment, you can be the teacher you can be the one that illuminates for them the path that most is needed from them to this world. Just continue to draw that light down and laser it out to them. And just allow your consciousness to perceive that they take it in and that there's a shifting. Maybe you see it amplification of light or smiles or opening send that light and become aware of its effect and continue to do that till you really really feel that there has been a powerful shift Breathe deeply into your body and open your eyes. Thank you for that meditation. 
know that when you use these higher levels of consciousness and heart and awareness that your meditation makes a difference because we are all linked up through the ethers. We humans have a quality, a psychic quality. And so when you send light to someone that they have asked for, they receive it and they will begin to grow in their consciousness or to shift in ways that serve themselves and us all. The second part of this meditation at the Light Institute and the Sanctuary of Light is called Knowings. And from around the world each week, we receive questions that are the questions of people's hearts. And then we will discuss those questions to uplift ourselves and everyone who is participating. And so Allison will read to us the questions that we have uh, for this week. Allison, let's hear what they are. The first question is from Zurich, Switzerland. Questions for Chris. What do we learn from COVID-19? Mm. And how do we guide our children, certainly, into a new time on this planet? Mm -hmm. Well, dear heart, what we are learning still from COVID-19 uh, is uh, the necessity to absolutely change our sense of self, the way we connect in this world to those around us, to the entire world, and to ourselves. One of the first lessons is that there is no separation. We are truly a soul family. What happens to you happens to me. And so COVID is inviting us to begin to care uh, about people around the world who may have suffered, who may have passed from their bodies, who are afraid of this, uh, this virus. But actually, from a spiritual perspective, uh, there, is a, there is a very powerful lesson. And that is that your vehicle is a divine vehicle. It is the way that you use your life in terms of how you evolve, how you live. And so COVID is saying to us, we must begin to see our bodies in different ways. And one of the most important aspects of that is a pattern that humans have had from the beginning of time. Who is going to take care of me? Who is going to make it better? And COVID is really showing us that uh, it is not about when somebody gets a vaccine or somebody has some new technology. It's about you and your body and your sense of self. And so uh, my higher self has always said, you are your own healer, your own teacher, and your own priest. That doesn't mean that we don't receive information that, that can support us, but it means that we have to begin to look for ourselves. Uh, your body, might not want a vaccination, and someone else's may need it. Your body might want herbs. Your body might want oxygen. Your body might want uh, movement. Your body might want uh, what is uh, so prevalent in uh, Asian cultures and religions and uh, in uh, old, old uh, classes of, of healing, which is to create an energy that radiates out from you uh, that is such a high frequency that this, this very low vibration of a virus cannot penetrate you. So there's much to be explored how to, how to heal yourself, how to move on from this. Because the more that we are waiting now around the world for the next, for the next uh, time that it's going to get strong, the more you and I are creating it. Uh, what comes through our consciousness, what comes through our emotions and our thoughts uh, are played out. And so it's very important for us to begin to say, I am not available and take care of our bodies in a way that, that simply removes you as a victim. So there are deeper spiritual themes in, in this experience. One of them is that it's time to not be victims and to see how we can change that. There are many stories, and I've put some short videos uh, on YouTube uh, to help people to find ways of helping their body and getting beyond that fear, because fear lowers our immunity and freezes us. We have no power when we are afraid. 
Now, the second part, how can we guide our children through this time where adults are in such fear and frustration and, and uh, a terrible motion of getting rid of things or losing things or changing our lives. And so we must remember that our children are watching and our children are receiving what I call here psychogenetically. It means that they are perceiving emotionally and spiritually as well as physically the way we handle our lives right now. And so we must be very careful not to pass to our children uh, the terrible fear of life or future. We need to uphold for them that they have a role in the future and that we can also teach them technologies of consciousness, I call them, that we use here, uh, to not be afraid to be alone. Uh, people are so frustrated because they say, oh, I'm imprisoned. No, you're not imprisoned. You are free to in create uh, inner worlds. And so we want to teach our children to look within and to see who's in there and see the qualities they have, help them to learn to take care of their bodies with a kind of consciousness that says, I am healthy and strong, and I, I, am, I am not this. I am not this. And to yeah, feel that they are growing into the future, and as they are right now, is what will ripple into the future. So, teaching them about color, teaching them how to care for other people, one of the great lessons, again, is to uh, have your children understand that we don't have to touch somebody with our bodies to touch them with our hearts or our consciousness. That we can use these, these technologies of consciousness of extending light to people uh, to learn to meditate at Nijoni School for Global Consciousness here uh, at the Light Institute. Uh, we always taught children to meditate while they were walking, you know, while they were moving, and because consciousness is meditation, and meditation is a form of consciousness, and so it doesn't. You don't have to sit still. You don't have to do anything particular. You just have to shift to it. So you can teach your children how to find that place within and how to learn how to explore themselves, their creativity, their intelligence, their love for life, whether that's for an animal or a plant or, or all the people on the planet. Uh, we want to guide them now and not just leave them out because they are aware of everything that's happening. And so, for example, if you have to change your jobs, it's a wonderful family con conversation. Hmm. I wonder if I could do what I really love to do, and what do we really love to do? And so there are so many ways that we can guide them. But remember that the most powerful guiding is to help them create a strong sense of self that is not a victim of the outside world, but that it knows that they have come to contribute, and that they can contribute right now, they don't have to grow up to contribute, through the power of their loving consciousness. You can teach them that, but remember, you have to uh, live in that way yourself. Great love to you, Zurich. Yes, Allison. The next question is from New York City, New York, in the USA. Chris, I just saw one of my favorite singers perform for the first time in many years, oh. and I was shocked. She used to carry an incredibly beautiful energy. Now her light has dimmed, her voice has weakened, and her body has become dense. It was a wake-up call to me. Will you please talk about why this happens to most people as they grow older and how we can avoid this? You don't have this problem, and I just learned you're 78, the same <laughs> age as the singer. I'm 78 and probably a four or eight or whatever because my inner child. And by the way, when we speak of the inner child, we're not talking about the emotional child that didn't get theirs or what happened to them as children. We're talking about that aspect of ourself that came in with our body that is a part of the cosmos. Uh, I'm a very simple person. I can become ecstatic over a flower. I allow myself 
uh, the gift of nature. And nature allows us to shed the heaviness. Imagine these famous people and how much pressure is put upon them to maintain some kind of beauty or, or whatever field they're in, that they have to always be the same because the public wants to project upon them. And so if they get older, it's, it's as you were saying, a wake-up call for everyone else, and it's, and it's uh, frightening to others to see their templates of beauty, of, of talent, of quali- these higher qualities sort of fall into the abyss as they get older. We don't have to do that. First of all, we have so many technologies today to help us not get old, and I'm not talking about facelifts or things like that. I'm talking about inner energies, inner ways of nourishing ourselves. But again, what I would say, what keeps you young is uh, to be juicy, to not uh, dry up in your sexual energy or your loving energy. It's really good to, to have partners or to be touched or to touch. Uh, this, this helps very much. Uh, for many people, uh, to love life, to, to really be grateful for life, rather than, again, feeling the victim, or now I can't do this, or now I can't do that. So many people, as they get older, they're very, very aware of what they cannot do. And so at the Light Institute, we would be meditating all the time. Body, what do you need now to be healthy and strong? The body's not counting the years, you know. The body, the body is counting what you are saying, and, and it then replicates uh, your command. So if you're saying, oh, I have so many aches and pains, your body's going to produce aches and pains. Uh, it's going to follow your mandate. So what if your mandate was, uh, I love you, body. Good job, body. Uh, when I do yoga and I can pull something off or if I'm taking a walk and, and uh, I realize that I'm never out of breath, I compliment my body. And so uh, it's, it's allowing you to see your body uh, not as whether it's young or it's old, if you're not counting your wrinkles, but you're looking at your body from the inside out, uh, that it's, it will do what you ask it to do. Uh, But you have to ask it, and you have to listen to it. And so these are the things that I do. I ask my body what it wants to eat. I ask my body what it wants from me uh, right now for this or that. And that makes a a really profound profound difference. Uh, I think it's very important to not be afraid of uh, getting older. Because we are in a time when really uh, we are... Uh, we have the capacity to live longer. One of the things that I've noticed is that in areas of the world where people live to be over 100, uh, they are people who live simply in nature. And they work until they're done. And so the body needs to work. It was created to work. Uh, by which I mean physically. You know, to go for a walk, to laugh. Laughing is uh, so good for the heart. Uh, and for the mind, uh, meditation is powerful. Uh, all of these things can uh, give us that energy that looks out on the world and uh, feels a part of it. One of the things that happens when people get older is that they don't feel um, valued because we put a lot of emphasis on youth. That value has to come from inside you. You have to see the wisdom that you have accrued. You have to see how you now can become a, a, a giver. That you can give of your wisdom, you can give of your joy, you can give of so, in so many ways. And that that helps you to feel that you have purpose. Because we have purpose. We do not get out of our bodies until we finish with what our soul was wanting us to explore and to master. And so what I would say is, uh, first of all, don't be afraid of getting old, uh, but don't think of yourself in that way. Don't think of yourself in years. Uh, When people say to me, oh, you're 78, I have to blink for a second because I don't count in years. I count in, again, uh, my life force energy. So focus your attention on amplifying your life force energy. and that will bring you to a, I wrote a book called The Ageless Body. 
the ancient body. And that's the body that, that you can have right now. It's inside you. Just in the same way that that inner child that could run and play and laugh and was not afraid of the heaviness of the world. And that's the secret, is to feel yourself of value. And uh, one of the gifts, by the way, uh, if we go on in our lives, is to begin to let go of these judgments we think we feel from others. But to know that we are free to say, I will choose for myself. I don't need you to pat me on the head and say, good job. I can pat my own self on the head and say, good job. And there's a freedom that comes from not needing someone to approve of you that is unique to uh, our experience of embodiment. And I think that keeps us really free and, and that allows us to be healthy. Great love. Allison. The last question comes from Japan. Japan. Dear Chris, my question is about meditation. Oh. Every, everyone has a different method, a different opinion, a better way, etc. But I saw you on a past knowings and you talked about snapping your fingers and going into a meditative state in any situation. I love how simple and effective this is. I would appreciate hearing more about it. Oh, oh that's wonderful. There are indeed many ways of bringing ourselves into a meditative state. We know that a meditative state slows down the brain and draws us into what we call an alpha rhythm of the brain, a slower rhythm of the brain. What happens when we get into that slower rhythm is that our consciousness expands. As it expands, the chatter in our minds quiets down. So many meditative uh, techniques are about stopping that chatter. You know, breath is a great way to do it. Following your breath, as I said earlier, uh, uh, you can do walking meditations, you know. Uh, but what I taught myself uh, was um, that I saw that in some places uh, people have gained a great deal of power over their minds. Uh, in Russia, they use this concept of the Pavlovian uh, technique, as they talk about in psychology, whereby you program something, and then the body takes that on as a habit. And I think that's probably how I got this idea. Click my fingers, click your fingers, and say, I am meditating. And the moment that I click my fingers, I don't even have to say, I am meditating, because now my body knows if I click my fingers, I think Silva Mind Control used something like this as well. My body has now uh, been programmed by me, not by anything outside, but by me to slow down the vibration of the brain. And so uh, I use that if, I, if I'm starting to chatter or worry or trying to get an answer, but uh, there are too many, but what if this and this and look at that, then I just go, I am meditating. And that stops the chatter. And I, can, I literally can feel a slowing down in my brain, which my body has learned to love because it sets it free. There's a kind of, it goes and then there's this expanding kind of energy. And so try that. It's, it's very simple and it is very effective. And again, as I was saying a moment ago, your body is listening to you. And so if you say to yourself, I am meditating, your body will happily place you in a meditative state. Even if you're walking, even, and I do that often when I'm taking walks, I am meditating. And when I do that, I sometimes can hear things that I wouldn't hear. My consciousness does expand. And so my body loves it when I say, I am meditating. I am meditating. Practice it. You'll love it too. Let us all hold these meditative states, expand our consciousness, open our hearts, and know that it is through this expansion that we receive uh, the energies of life and the information that we need to live our lives well.
and to give our gifts into this world. Until our next meditation.